Hi everybody, welcome back to the second episode of All Things Wetland Plants. My name is Jen Gilrich and I work at Urtic Krell, the Cold Regions Research and Engineering Laboratory. And I'm here in beautiful downtown Hanover, New Hampshire. And uh, in the first video, uh, Bob told you all that we would be posting lists of the most common species nationally, regionally, in the states, and in the core districts, right? These are species on the National Wetland Plant List. And we have done that. And what I'm going to address in this video is how those lists were made and what we mean when we say a plant species is common in a geographic area. So, uh, first of all, we posted the list, as I said, at four spatial scales, right? The nation, regions, states, and districts. And what we found was that commonness varies according to spatial scale. So a uh, species, for example, like Kentucky bluegrass is common nationally. And to tell you what that means, it means, well, first of all, it occurs in more than half of the counties nationwide, including Alaska, Hawaii, and the Caribbean regions. The way the database is structured can explain to you sort of how we came up with how many counties a plant species occurs in. So in our, in our database, uh, we have the species name followed by uh, all of the counties that it occurs in. And so our computer programmer, Rick, wrote this program and the program tells him how many counties each species occurs in. So uh, we know the Kentucky bluegrass occurs in over half of the counties, boroughs, and parishes in the United States. And so it made the most common species list for the nation. Uh, one of the biases that we saw in that list that I'm going to address later is that the species on the, the top 10 national families, species in those families, um, they tended to be from families that were the most species rich, meaning the families had a lot of species in them. So you didn't see any families which had very few species on the national wetland plant list. Um, but common nationally was the asters, the sedges, uh, the grasses, and they were, they were in the top 10 for most of the regional lists as well. So um, I guess as we go down to the regional level, you'll see that Kentucky bluegrass is common in most of the regions. It's common in Alaska, it's common across the, the north, the northern part of the lower 48, uh, but it's not common in Hawaii, or the Caribbean, and you can see in the map that I'm showing you here that it is not common in the Atlantic, Gulf, and Coastal Plain region either. All of that area there where it's purple or lavender, uh, it, Kentucky bluegrass is absent there. So we can see that although it's common nationally, it may or it may not be common in the regions. And then when you take it down a level to the state level, uh, the, same, the same thing occurs. Um, an example that I'll use is just the two states of Kansas and uh, adjacent Oklahoma. Kentucky bluegrass is common in Kansas, occurring in more than half the counties. However, uh, it is not common in adjacent Oklahoma. So uh, commonness is definitely more variable at the state level. And uh, I guess another, another concern or problem that we ran into was uh, small states with very few counties. What we found was that we couldn't use this criteria of occurs in more than half the counties because if you only have three or five counties in your state, uh, it's not really saying much to say that a plant species occurred in half of them. So we increased the criterion for commonness in those types of states. And for example, in Delaware, a very small state with three counties, a plant species on the National Wetland Plant List had to occur in all three counties in order to be considered common. Uh, in Massachusetts, a slightly larger state, 
Uh, it has 14 counties. We uh, felt that if a plant species occurred in 10 of those 14, spe 10 of the 14 counties, it could be considered common. And um, so at the top of every plant list, there'll be, there's just a little um, header that tells you what is, what is in the list. And that's where you'll find uh, the criterion that we used for common. Most of them, as I said, is half the counties in the geographic area, but there are some exceptions, mostly the smaller states uh, with very few counties. And then the last type of species that gave us a little bit of, of problem was those species that are common nationally, but um, they are from very small families or the family doesn't have a lot of species on the national wetland plant list. So an example would be uh, box elder, Acer nagundo. This species, as you can see, it occurs in more than half of the counties in the United States. However, uh, there's only like 12 species, I think, from its family on the plant list. So uh, it didn't make the top 10 uh, families nationally. However, uh, the point behind all of, of these lists is not just to make lists, but the point is to, we're going to use these lists to make dichotomous keys to the most common species in every region. So we're also going to do dichotomous keys to the most common woody species, which is where we'll catch species like um, Acer nagundo that may be very, very common in a region, but uh, didn't make the top 10 most common families. So, but as I said, we'll be, we'll be devising these dichotomous keys for groups like the woody plants, for the ferns, as well as for the top 10 families in every region. So the grasses, the asters, um, the sedges, those type of things. So you not only have a list of common species, but you have a means to decide which species you have in your hand. You can take it through the dichotomous key. And um, I think that, that that about covers everything. So I'm going to sign off for now, and I'll see you next time.